That's it, that's the front section. Now on to the front clip and the dash. So four screws and the nose pieces off, just like I thought. Next, we're going to remove the dash. Okay, before we could remove the dash, we had to remove this, which is by far so far the most complicated piece to remove. Uh, it has four screws and two bolts in it. This back section has to come off first, but the bottom part is the harder. It sits there. You have two screws on each side. Now you will need the key and probably somebody to help you hold it up because you have to adjust the handbrake down to get to one of the screws. Once that's off, you need to remove the nut here. And then this section comes apart fairly easily, but there are two clips that are no longer there because I pulled that part off at first and it was harder than I thought it would be that go into these two loops. But we'll figure that out when we go to put it back together. So you may want to pull the bottom section off first, but it seems it would be harder. You also need an Allen head to go in the end of this to pull this off. And this is a piece of cast iron, it seems. So it was quite hard to get off some WD-40. I used to uh, oil it up to get to work it off and I ended up having to take some pliers and apply pretty hard pressure to get it off. So that's that section. Like I said, four screws, uh, one blocked by the handbrake and uh, two 10 millimeter bolts and it's off and now onto the dash. Okay, so one screw here to take off the uh, emergency light switch and one plug that slips out. It's got two little clips on the side, so press those and pull out. Okay, uh, just a note, I didn't break that. That was broken in the crash. But I might have cracked a couple clips up here. Man, he's gonna kill me. No, I can actually repair those pretty easily and this section fits tight with the uh, windshield. Uh, most of these were actually already broken in the crash. He hit the ground pretty hard. Um, but you have four screws in the top of this and then you have to remove these six across the edge here. Um, I didn't want to pull the instrument panel out because we're just disassembling it to paint and I don't feel like having to mess with the speedometer cable. So there are four screws in it that you can actually push up and get to. Um, you have a little less clearance than that actually, so a smaller screwdriver might help. I did it with the large one I've been using, but that's just because I'm a dummy and I like to make things harder on myself. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, like I said, after you get those disconnected and before the speedometer cable, you're going to lean up and try to dislodge it forward to keep from breaking these. Uh, that one actually broke later. That was my fault. These two are already broken the wreck. And this one, it's actually in good shape because I'm good like that. <laughs> So be cautious there, but that's it. This section lifts off with your glove boxes. And there we go. We're working on a pretty good pile of parts here and still quite a few to go. So uh, next I'm removing the floorboard section and that should allow me to pull the rest of the front moldings off and then we'll start on the back section. Okay, and trying to remove the bottom shield of the dash I found out that the actual side rocker panel on the bottom has to come off first you have two 10 millimeter bolts and then here and in three locations under the mat you have uh, Phillips head screws that have to come out here here and here and you also have two Phillips head screws one here and you can't see it on this side because it's different, but one up here on the other side that have to come out. And as you can see, there's where the 10 millimeter sockets are, and there's where the screws are. So I haven't pulled this side off yet. But both of these side panels are going to have to come off before the bottom part of the dash. Okay, I need to make a correction. The two screws, one is here. But one is actually underneath where I don't even think you can see with the camera. But you'll see it when you look under there. And when you take the panel off, it needs to be pulled forward as I will demonstrate. So you're going to take this and pull it out. And you need to pull it up at an angle because there are clips that hold here. These are cracked. But if they aren't cracked, you need to pull forward like that to remove it correctly. 
Okay, so next I removed the uh, battery door cover and charger. Uh, this bike has a built-in tender, and that's all there is to it. Two screws and the little adapter, which has a uh, push plug on it, so push and pull. Okay, now we're going to lift the seat and start disassembling the, uh, the floor area here under the seat. The back section, because I believe all of this has to come off before the floorboard and the front section can come off. Okay, so I removed the four screws that hold the door to the back on, just regular Phillips head screws. I've got to pull out all this lining and pull the seat, the back of the back seat off so that I can get to the bolts to start disassembling this back piece so I can get this off because there's a row of screws under here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to take these four screws in the bottom out and along the edges, there are multiple screws that have to be taken out and then all this has to be unvelcroed and pulled out. I don't have to pull it all out to get to the back seat, but it's just gonna be easier in the long run since everything has to be painted anyways. Take off the Velcro and pulling the uh, back sections out. I still have to pull the bolt out of the floor a little bit, but so, there you go. Now I can get to everything and I can get to the back of the seat to let these screws out to take the uh, back backrest off. Okay, these in the bottom are actually nuts and bolts, so you can get your hand under here to all of them, but it's a good idea to get your hand under there to catch the nuts as they fall so you don't lose them. Okay, so that's all the bolts off the back, or the nuts off the back side. And there you go, there's your unfinished trunk. So now like I say, we can get to the backrest, get it off, take these out to get the armrest off, and then we can pull the rest of the plastic off and start removing the outside plastic. Okay, so I've removed the four screws here, and now the back seat backrest should just pull away. And there we go. So now I have to pull these two nuts off of each side, or bolts off of each side, to remove the armrest, and then I can get to the rest of the screws and we can start getting the floor panel off. Okay, so four 12 millimeter bolts and the armrest are removed. And uh, now on to removing the back plate. Okay, here's the backrest section we're gonna take off. Looks like a few 10 millimeter bolts and some screws. And that's gonna allow us to take this section off, which I've already removed the screws and the bolts out of. But then I realized there was this section here holding me up. so. We're gonna do this first, then this, to try to stay in the correct step here. Okay, eight screws and nine of the number 10 millimeter bolts later, and all you have to do is lift up, or push up towards the top, pull out at the bottom and pull down, and there's your back piece. So now on to the next step. Okay, so now with the back plate removed, uh, that took these bolts out. Uh, there were four uh, 10 millimeter bolts there and eight screws, four on each side. Now this pulls up, wiggle a little to get around the hinge, and there we go. Now that's exposed. Now we can start pulling the back plastic outer sections off. I'm going to start with the top pillar here and then go to the tail light assembly, I believe, and then everything else should come off around it till we work our way to the front, to the other parts of the battery cover. Then we should be able to pull the floorboard off and then the uh, front nose section. Okay, so it looks like seven screws and we should be able to get this section off. We have two here, one here, 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 and two more over here. And this whole top section here should come off and I have to pull this seal from around the trunk area carefully because it sounds a little bit dry rotted. 
and looks like I was right those screws and we're done uh, keep in mind the uh, larger head screws go into the metal bracket at the top here and the smaller ones go into the plastic clips on the side just to keep that in mind when reassembling okay I believe the next step will be to remove the tail light assembly and that should just involve two screws here on the top and two underneath I could be wrong but I believe that's all and then from there we'll go to remove the side sections which actually doesn't look to be held on by that much okay it was just those four screws holding it in place now at this point you have the option of just removing the tail lights from the assembly and removing the panel also the uh, tag light you can see down there or removing the whole tail light assemblies that's going to be what I'm doing because we're going to paint it so they have to be removed anyways it's a lot easier than taping over them so at this point it's your option whatever's easier for whatever you're doing okay now I've removed the uh, tail lights as you can see just laying there and the uh, tag light swinging <laughs> from the back assembly that's what it looks like uh, the lock actually doesn't have to come apart it's a very simple this whole unit turns which is what engages and disengages the trunk lock so not a big hassle there and here's where we're at so far now getting to the side panels and I would say we're probably 80% of the way done here uh, I don't see there being that much left I see four major pieces and three smaller pieces so it looks like we're way downhill here <laughs> but let's hope okay uh, this side section actually came off fairly easy it really is just two screws holding it you have one here and then a bigger screw down here I removed the uh, right hand side first and now I'm going to remove the left hand side because on this side you have the lock mechanism here so it either has to be disconnected at the lock or I will probably just slip this pull tab you'll see when you get it off and pull the lock out of the side panel because I have to have it out to paint anyways and uh, it's just one small nut on the back to remove the reflector if you need to do that if not two screws pull out and then you have two sliding clips here so watch those and make sure you don't break them they just slide forward and out okay important correction the clips actually slide back and out the clips on the other side were broken from the fall so I thought it was reversed but back and out and you'll pull the clips loose so you don't break them and here's the lock mechanism I was talking about I'm just gonna slip this pin here grab it with some pliers and pull it off and that'll disengage the lock from the plastic cover okay so that clip didn't disengage the lock like I wanted it to and I was scared I was gonna break the side panel trying to get the lock out or mess up the lock mechanism so two more 10 millimeter bolts and I pulled the whole lock assembly from under the seat off which is fine I can tape over that and paint so now on to the next step we're moving these front side panels which should be relatively easy then in the uh, other part of the battery cover the top part of it I don't think I'm gonna have to remove the hinge or the seat but uh, the rest does need to come off then on to the floor panel and the front sides okay when you get to this section you need to remove the 10 millimeter bolts here and here and then the screw here two 10 millimeter bolts there and two 10 millimeter bolts here and here and a screw there once you get all this off you can let the seat up and you can wiggle it to get it out it might be easier just to uh, take the seat off it's only a couple screws to get it off uh, I just didn't really want to take it off so you can wiggle forward and get this out be careful because uh, because you have four screws actually holding these two sections together so I couldn't get to them even with the seat off I don't think I could have gotten to them so this all had to come off as one section but there you go this sections off now we can start working 
I imagine on the floorboard would be next. Uh, getting this rubber piece up 